China planted their flag on the moon in June 2024. Their lunar base is coming by 2030, and NASA knows it. But Artemis is stuck in red tape while acting administrator Sean Duffy publicly blasts SpaceX for missing deadlines. What's really happening behind the scenes? Elon just fired back with something nobody saw coming. He says forget the slow buildup. Land one starship, tip it sideways, and you've got an instant moon base. No construction crews, no years of assembly. Could this crazy idea actually beat China to a permanent lunar outpost? Let's talk about what NASA actually planned. Artemis III was supposed to be the big moment, Americans back on the moon after five decades. But here's the problem. It's essentially Apollo 11 all over again. Plant a flag, collect some rocks, take some photos, then come home. That's it. No permanent presence, no infrastructure. Just proof that we can still do what we did in 1969. The real work doesn't start until Artemis IV. That's when NASA wants to begin building Artemis Base Camp. Habitats, power systems, the whole package. But we're talking years between these missions. Years of planning, testing, contract negotiations, and congressional budget fights. Every component built by different contractors, each one needing approval, integration testing, and more delays. Sean Duffy isn't holding back his frustration. The acting NASA administrator went public with criticism that SpaceX is falling behind on Starship development. He even floated the idea of bringing in Blue Origin and Lockheed Martin as backup options. That's NASA speak for we're losing confidence. Elon's response. He torched Duffy on social media, questioning whether NASA's leadership even understands how modern engineering works. But he didn't stop at defending SpaceX. He went after the entire Artemis philosophy. Why waste years recreating Apollo when we have the technology to build a permanent base right now? The tension isn't just personal, it's philosophical. NASA operates like a government agency because it is one. Multiple contractors, endless oversight, risk-averse decision-making. Every bolt needs documentation. Every change requires approval from three different committees. SpaceX moves fast, breaks things, learns, and iterates. These are fundamentally incompatible approaches, trying to work together under political pressure. Now here's where Elon's proposal gets wild. Starship can carry over 200 metric tons to orbit in its fourth version. That's more payload capacity than anything that's ever flown. NASA's plan involves sending multiple small modules that astronauts have to assemble on the lunar surface. Elon says, skip all that. The rocket is the base. Land a starship on the moon. Use thrusters to tip it from vertical to horizontal. Now you've got a 50-meter-long steel cylinder lying on its side. The entire interior, already pressurized, already equipped, becomes livable space. No construction required, no assembly crews, no years of prefabricated modules arriving one at a time. The economics are brutal for traditional approaches. Previous lunar deliveries cost around $1 million per kilogram. Elon claims Starship can do it for $100,000 per kilogram. That's a tenfold reduction. Suddenly, building something substantial on the moon stops being a fantasy budget item and becomes almost affordable. But the real genius is what happens after landing. Strip out the wings and heat shield. You don't need them on the moon anyway. That saves mass. Deploy five massive solar arrays, each 18 meters across, arranged in a hexagonal pattern around the base. Power sorted. Inside, robots and crew retrofit the interior. Add floors, walls, plumbing, electrical systems, thermal controls. What was a cargo hold becomes living quarters, labs, command centers, storage. The design gives you 600 cubic meters of pressurized space. 
That's two-thirds the volume of the entire International Space Station in a single vehicle. For comparison, the Apollo Lunar Module had 4.5 cubic meters. Astronauts could barely move. This is 130 times larger. Room to actually live, not just survive. Two decks connected by a wide staircase, not a cramped ladder. Sleeping quarters, dining areas, research labs, exercise zones, maintenance bays. The walls curve with the rocket's shape. Equipment and storage hide behind clean panels. Large windows look directly onto the lunar surface, not just for morale, but for visibility during landing operations and surface monitoring. Then there's protection. The moon has no atmosphere, no magnetic field. Radiation and micrometeorites are constant threats. Elon's solution? Cover the entire starship in five meters of lunar regolith. Use the moon itself as a shield. The result is essentially a steel and dust fortress, far more protection than thin-walled inflatable modules could ever provide. Each starship becomes a self-contained habitat. Need to expand? Land another one? Link them together. Scale up as missions require. NASA's approach requires each new module to be designed, tested, launched, and carefully integrated. SpaceX just lands another identical unit. We actually got a sneak peek at how this might work. Back in November 2024, SpaceX built a full-scale mock-up at Starbase. It wasn't meant to fly, just to test systems and layouts. That prototype used Starship S-22, which was originally designed to hold fuel tanks. The interior was cramped, divided into small rooms, packed with exposed cables and machinery. It felt like a maintenance bay, not a place humans would live for months. NASA astronauts tested it anyway. They crawled through tight spaces, practiced operations, provided feedback, and SpaceX went back to the drawing board. When they revealed the updated design in October 2025, everything had changed. The interior was open, refined, spacious. The difference was night and day. The airlocks are particularly impressive. Each one has 13 cubic meters of volume, more than double what Apollo astronauts had in their entire lunar module. In June 2024, SpaceX tested an airlock mock-up at their headquarters using Axiom EMU spacesuits. The walls were covered in white hexagonal pads that look like honeycomb. They're soft cushions to protect bulky spacesuits from getting damaged if astronauts bump into walls while suiting up. There's a control panel with a tilted screen showing Starship landing on the moon. Talk buttons for communication. Red-bordered buttons probably for depressurization when it's time to head outside. A temporary fabric door in the mock-up clearly just for testing. The real version will have a sealed metal hatch that can handle vacuum on one side and pressure on the other. What makes this approach fundamentally different is speed. NASA's Artemis Base Camp requires years of incremental assembly. Each module arrives separately, gets positioned, connected, tested. You're essentially building a base the way you'd build a house, piece by piece, step by step. SpaceX says you can go from landing to living in weeks, not years. The base arrives complete. You're just adapting interior spaces that are already there. The first commercial cargo missions could start in 2028 if development stays on track. That's three years away. Not decades. Not after endless delays and budget overruns. NASA's Artemis IV, when they plan to start building their base, might not fly until the early 2030s. By then, Elon wants multiple starships already on the moon, operating as Moon Base Alpha. China isn't standing still either. They're partnering with Russia and other nations to build their International Lunar Research Station by the 2030s. They've got plans for laboratories, mining infrastructure, potentially nuclear power systems. When Chang'e 6 returned from the moon in June 2024 with samples from the far side, Beijing made sure the world noticed. 
The message was clear. They're not asking permission. They're moving forward. This is why the stakes are so high. Whoever establishes a permanent presence first doesn't just win bragging rights. They set the rules. They choose where to build, which resources to exploit, how international cooperation works, or doesn't. The moon becomes their strategic high ground for everything that comes after. Mars missions, asteroid mining, deep space exploration. It all starts with who controls the lunar gateway. So NASA is caught between two pressures. Move fast enough to beat China, but do it the NASA way with all the bureaucracy that implies. Elon is offering a shortcut. It's risky, it's unconventional, and it completely bypasses the traditional aerospace industrial complex. But if it works, if it works, we could see humans living on the moon within this decade. Not visiting. Living. That's the difference Elon is pushing for. NASA wants to take careful steps, test everything twice, build consensus across contractors and committees. SpaceX wants to land a rocket, open the door, and start unpacking. The real question isn't which approach is safer or more proven. We know NASA's method works. It's how we built the ISS, how we've done space exploration for 60 years. The question is whether it's fast enough. Because while NASA debates and Elon tweets, China is launching missions, testing technologies, and building partnerships for their lunar research station. They're not waiting for anyone's approval. History doesn't usually reward the most careful player. It rewards whoever shows up first and stays longest. The Apollo program won because we got there before the Soviets, not because we had the perfect plan. Now we're in a new race, and this time the finish line isn't a footprint. It's a permanent base with power, water, and people working year-round. Will Moon Base Alpha actually happen? That depends on whether NASA can swallow its pride and let SpaceX move at SpaceX speed, or whether they'll open that contract to Blue Origin and Lockheed, reset the timeline, and watch China plant their flag first. What do you think? Can Elon actually pull this off, or is NASA right to pump the brakes? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If you want to see how this space race plays out, hit that subscribe button for Atlas Space, and smash that like button if you're as hyped as I am about humans going back to the moon. Thanks for watching.